huge three points there for Manchester United and for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. An absolutely wonderful performance. And uh, yeah, much needed uh, performance result and just everything today. It was pretty good. Um, it was looking a little bleak at the start of the game. Uh, you know, we went 1-0 behind. Uh, some wonderful work from Bernard to create some space. And he slots it in. Uh, it's a really nice finish. And you're thinking, fuck's sake, it's going to, you know, it's going to be the, the whole the whole shit, you know, the the axe is going to be wielded for Oli, but um, thankfully it wasn't. And, you know, the performance, aside from the that little lasp in concentration, was pretty good. Uh, we, we fully deserved the win. And I've got to say, Bruno Fernandes is by far our best and our most consistent performer. That's what sets him apart from some of the other players in the squad. I feel like it's his consistency. Even when he's having a bad game, you still feel like he's going to get a goal or an assist or both, or create a goal-scoring chance. And today, he could have had three assists. Uh, you know, he could have had a hat-trick right at the end, but he passed it off to Cavani to get his first goal for the club. Get in. But, um, yeah, I mean, he was really the linchpin today. Everything good from Manchester United came through Bruno Fernandes. And also, there's a stat. For all those Bruno Fernandes uh, fans, you know, the, the ones that constantly bang on about his penalties... No midfielder in the Premier League has scored more since Bruno's arrived from open play goals than Bruno Fernandes. So, you know, he's scored seven open play goals since arriving. He's had 30 goal contributions, assists, penalties, goals, everything included. So, yeah, he, he's been phenomenal. And, yeah, he's had a few little, you know, five out of ten performances. But even in those games, he still looked like he could create something, um, which sets him apart. And that's why he's world class, in my opinion. Like, he genuinely is... And uh, he'll prove that for many years to come at United anyway. But, uh, yeah, we got the equaliser. It was a brilliant cross from Luke Shaw, who, again, like I said in the last video, same as Dean Henderson, they are pushing the other players. Sorry, well, because of the arrival of Tellers and because Dean Henderson came back from loan, David De Gea and Luke Shaw have upped their performances drastically this season. No one can deny that. Luke Shaw's been great. Even in the last game, he got an assist via a cross as well. That's two assists in two games for Luke Shaw. A wonderful cross and Bruno Fernandes peels off from the midfield and it's a wonderfully placed head end to the top right hand corner to equalise. And then we managed to get the second goal not shortly after and again it's Bruno who crosses it in. Rashford really should have got a header on this but you know it, it skims his head. It doesn't actually touch it. So yeah, it goes down as a Bruno goal. Uh, thankfully, it was on target. Uh, Pickford was obviously anticipating the shot from Rashford. And yeah, we managed to go 2-1 at half-time. Martial had a couple of chances in the first half as well before uh, there was any goals when it was 0-0. Uh, he should have scored. It, it was a ball played through to him. Um, it might have been Bruno. It might have been someone else. And yeah, he's put it just wide. And then there was another chance that he had as well uh, where he, he should have finished it when it was already 2-1. But we didn't. And uh, the second half starts. And, uh, I mean, in the first half, Everton had that half chance with Calvert-Lewin where it was a cross from Bernard, I think, and uh, he headed it just over the bar. But other than that, they they didn't really have much, in fairness. Like, Everton had a really, really strong start to the season, uh, but they've kind of tailored away uh, in the last couple of games. I think that's three losses in a row for Angelotti for the first time since 2006 when he was the AC Milan manager. So... You know, they're going to have to, um, well, you know, they're, they're going to have to analyse performances and see what's wrong, really. But in terms of us, we could have had a couple more. As I say, uh, Rashford got played through uh, by Bruno Fernandes, and I think he rushed the shot. Um, it's a poor finish. It's straight at Pickford. Uh, there was also a penalty uh, appeal where Kick, uh, Kickford, <laughs> well, it might as well be, but Pickford is... Um, like the the balls came out he's tried to get it or whatever but then it's hard to explain how the hell it arose but i cannot remember if it was a cross or something but anyhow pickford's not quite in goal and maguire's trying to like knee it in and pickford kind of kicks him across the body now this one's a debatable one is it a penalty is it not it wasn't given and at the end of the day we didn't actually need it to be given anyway um we won the game but it's one of those where you're thinking hmm Maybe it is. Um, the, the, shortly after, there was an offside where um, Maguire slid in, got the ball. And, um, you know, with the current rules, that probably would have been a penalty uh, if it wasn't offside. I honestly, again, call me biased, whatever, but I can't understand if a player gets the ball, 
His studs are down. Yes, I realise he catches there the player's boot, but his studs are down. They're not up, and he's followed through. He's got the ball, so I, I don't know how you could give that as a penalty. But regardless, it was offside. Two penalty calls that weren't given uh, in the space of a minute, so I think that balances out anyway. Um, but yeah, we, we could have scored more, and thankfully, right at the end, we did. Uh, Everton had a corner. We managed to clear it. We broke. Obviously, they're piling everyone forward because they need to get a point. Uh, and Bruno, really, really clever play. He cuts inside, and he dummies as though he's going to shoot. He sees Cavani's run. He passes it straight into Cavani, and Cavani slots it in for his first goal in a Manchester United shirt. I want to see Cavani start in the next game against uh, Istanbul. He definitely deserves a start. Instead of just getting these 10, 20 minutes, Martial's performances have been kind of poor this season. He did score a really good goal in the last game against Istanbul, but I don't know, maybe... Uh, like uh, Tears, who is thankfully back from COVID now, so after the international break, hopefully we can um, we can get him to to start a game as well. Uh, hopefully he doesn't go for Brazilian duty. But yeah, like um, with Dean Henderson and uh, Tears, there's competition now uh, for Marcel, so I think that'll drive some better performances. But yeah, Cavani definitely deserves a start in the next game. I'm surprised Donny was an unused sub. Uh, there was a lot of talk about why Pogba wasn't playing. Um, to be fair, he's been poor this season. Um, a lot of his performances haven't been great. So it made sense for him to be dropped. Um, there's there's a lot of why didn't Donny start fair enough. You know, I think Van der Beek does warrant more game time, definitely. But uh, I was surprised Pogba was subbed on rather than Van der Beek today. Um, but other than that, you know, we've got options in the midfield. And I feel like McTominay is unfairly criticised. Uh, he didn't put a foot wrong again today. But people will forget that as soon as he does something wrong, people will forget how solid he's been this season. Like, unlike with Pogba where the quality's there and he's, you know, he's had some good uh, pieces of play, don't get me wrong. Uh, the, the goal where he set up uh, Greenwood against, was that Leipzig? I think it was Leipzig. If not, it's PSG. One of the two, but I think it's Leipzig. Um, you know, to score, uh, you know, that was absolutely brilliant. But with Pogba, he just makes a lot of mistakes in the midfield. Whereas McTominay sits a bit deeper and he his role isn't the same as Pogba to create chances, to ping the long balls. He's kind of an enforcer. He, he wins the ball and passes it off. And to be fair, I think he's played really well. He partners and compliments Fred really well because it and allows them to one of them to sit back, one of them to go forward, and they seem to play well together instead of just using Matic, who has to do it lone, lonesome sometimes. So, you know, we, we've got options in the squad. We just need to make sure that we go on a winning streak. But, yeah, the international break, I think, is next. Um, so hopefully it's only a week, but it's probably two weeks. Ah, oh, fucking hell. At least it's the last one until March. And then when we come back... Um, who is the next game we've got? It's Southampton, isn't it? And then... It's Istanbul, so you know we'll see who starts in the next game. But hopefully we've got a fully fit squad like we do at the minute. Really, uh, there's only Bay and Lingard who are out, I think. But uh, yeah, uh, Twines Bay looked good when he came on for Luke Shaw. Hopefully Luke Shaw doesn't have a long-term injury. It just looked like a, a little bit of an impact thing because uh, he's been really good this season, uh, and he should have been picked for England. But regardless, because of this little knock, it's probably good that he wasn't. Um, so yeah, he can rest up and be fit. Uh, but of course, tears is. And yeah, there's my cat again. So uh, anyhow, I'm going to end this 3-1 brilliant performance. We can enjoy the weekend now and uh, hopefully look forward to much better results and performances in the future like this game.